across the country and other cities may be consuming the airwaves, but we're not going to let the left uh, get away with this one. A couple of weeks back, the medical establishment in the WHO seized on a study published in the Lancet Medical Journal that claimed that hydroxychloroquine increased the risk of death in COVID patients. Of course, the media was happy to pile on. These findings in The Lancet, which is a very influential medical journal, simply deepen the impression that the president has been reckless in his promotion of this drug. Clearly a deadly message, uh, a fatal message for those with vulnerabilities. Those who were given the drug the president has been huckstering for suffered a significantly higher risk of death. Let's bring in Dr. Uh, Supin Desai. He is one of the lead researchers of the study. People are scared. They're looking for solutions. And chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, especially when you combine them with a macrolide, the risk of death goes up. Okay, except now we know that the Lancet study was based on lies. And that man you just saw, Dr. Sapan Desai, is key to it all. Now, according to a damning expose in The Guardian, Desai was feeding researchers extremely flawed data through a shady little company he founded called Surgisphere. It's basically a shell company with just three employees, one of whom is a science fiction writer and another who is an adult content model. On top of that, Desai has been named in three previous medical malpractice lawsuits. More importantly, though, how many COVID patients went untreated or died because the sham study was weaponized for political purposes? Joining me now is Dr. Harvey Risch, professor of epidemiology at the Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Risch, how did Lancet and the WHO get fooled? Uh, good evening, Laura. What I think happened here is that peer review is good, but it's not perfect. And reviewers tend to be as critical or not, depending on whether they like the results that they see. And if, they, if the study comes up with results that they're motivated to want, then they're less likely to be as critical as they should be, or vice versa. Now, and a uh, new study came out today that is being uh, cited in the uh, mainstream media by um, Dr. Bulwer, and they're saying that that study was randomized and it shows that there's no benefit uh, of early use of hydroxychloroquine involving 800 patients. But our medical team has been digging into that as well. What can you tell us about that? So that study was indeed randomized. But it, it, had, it did not have no effect. It showed a 17 percent benefit of taking hydroxychloroquine preventively. There's another study in India that has also shown a benefit, but that study took six days in order to show a benefit. And the uh, Bulwer study, I think, lasted only for five days of treatment, so it's uncertain. But the main problem with the Bulwer study is that it tested for prevention people who are 30 to 50 years old. They're at more or less low risk. They had few, if any, other chronic diseases. And so those are people who aren't likely to be hospitalized even if they get COVID-19 and generally are not the ones you're going to treat. What we need to be treating as outpatients are high-risk people over 60 or with lots of, of other conditions. And we should actually test them. It, only 2 percent of the patients in the Bulware study were actually tested to confirm that they had COVID, correct? That's true, but I'm actually not a strict tester per se. I think that the symptoms at this time of year are, are pretty clear and you can pretty well distinguish COVID-19 here because there's very little influenza and seasonal allergies are totally different. So there's not much competition for those symptoms. And uh, Dr. Rich, just one other point. There was a Brazilian study that's gotten very little play that I know you cited in your article that led you, I believe, to think that hydroxychloroquine should be widely available in an outpatient setting. Um, what about that study? That study was a controlled study, not a randomized study, but it was done in a uh, clinic, in an HMO, that is a private clinic that's independent of government pressure, that is very highly regarded in Brazil by other clinicians in the country. And that study showed a, a benefit of, of taking hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin. And it, it, like many studies, this, people who take the medications or are given the medications tend to be sicker than the ones who aren't, because after all, clinicians think that they need more medications to try to, to help them. So in spite of having more 
serious um, symptoms of the, of the COVID-19 and more chronic conditions, they did better in, in avoiding hospitalization by taking the medications. And finally, in 15 seconds or so, doctor, after you published your piece, Critical of the Lancet Study, uh, and advocating on behalf of hydroxychloroquine, what did you hear from other doctors who treat COVID patients? So after I published my paper in the American Journal of Epidemiology last week, I've heard from hundreds of uh, physicians who've been very supportive of the message, which is that outpatient disease is a totally separate entity that needs to be evaluated and treated on its own mm -hmm. without regard to what happens in hospital. Dr. Rish, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your expertise.